Oh. Stop. Run into another fish. There we are. So you're joining us on a river and it's absolutely bob on today. There's been a really big rise but it's dropping off really really quickly. Now I've been following the catches for the border-esque and I've noticed that when there's been water and, and decent water that's the day that big fish have been caught. I can't wait to get in here because it looks super tasty. I think we're gonna have to have a cast over that. It's like a gravel bar, actually, not, not bedrock. Ah, I pricked myself. All right, so I've changed to a size 12 double alley shrimp. That's a nice property over there. With it's riverside access. Very nice. So I've been reading a bit of uh, Hugh Faulkner's salmon book. I'm sort of taken with the fact that, you know, he had his own stretch of river. Oh, there's the first fish that I've seen get in. I think that was a sea trout. But yeah, back to Hugh Faulkner's and his river. Oh, how nice that must be. To be able to spend the whole season just fishing on your own water and get to know it as it as it changes through the months. It's coming around there at a decent pace, that fly. So I saw what I thought was a, a rubber duck floating down the river. And then I turn around only to find that there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, like two dozen rubber ducks floating down the river. Doesn't seem like a very good idea. There's two people up there who've obviously released the ducks.
doesn't seem to be much happening in the way of trout, but then there doesn't seem to be much happening in the way of insects. There's a few midges. There's a little else. I guess the trout will be busy underneath. Plus there's been big water, so I might be just keeping the noises down. Oh, I just had a cloak. Come on. Come back. Oh, I just had a cloak. Might have been a cloak, but if it was, it was a heavy cloak. Get around the stick with the tree. Keep on that. That exposes, exposes my crotch to the dampness. Just missed a fish. All right, it's a start. Someone's had a go. Found another trout. Alright, keep still. Keep still, we'll sort the jar out. Well, no harm done. Excellent. Raspberries. So as you can see, I'm not in the river anymore. 
I decided to come back. I've done the whole beat uh, and I've come back to good cholera walk. So we found a nice woodland walk very near to the river. And comes complete with wild raspberries, which are remarkably sweet actually. So no fish so far. Yeah, come with me. Sorry? It was a duck grey fur layer. Ah, you're looking for ducks. I saw them all. They all passed me. <laughs> um, do you get a prize or something if you win? Well, there's one there on the other bank. Oh, yeah. Oh. Yeah, no, I don't know if they got the winner because they were all together. Right. I just I watched them all go past and that, and my mum wanted one, so I thought I'd come down and try again. Ah, one. try and get that one. Ah. I think they've all, they've all sailed on by, mate. <laughs> yeah. I saw one stuck through there, but I did the fancy to get wet. No, not, not worth it for a duck. So what's, what, what is it? I didn't realise, I don't know what was happening, so... I think it's just that it was sort of a thing in the build-up for Bubble Guys. They've done a big duck race in the film Green. Right. And then, so it had like six folk in the water trying to catch all, like, 550 ducks. Oh, right. No nets or anything, so <laughs> that didn't work. And then I was standing watching hundreds upon hundreds of ducks come down the river. Right. I, I saw about 50 of them come past me, you know, I, was like, well, I didn't know what was happening, you know. Anyway. Yeah, maybe it's not the best plan, that one, then. No. But I'm just hoping there's one stuck around here, because it's quite a rocky bit. Yeah. You got one? Oh, well done. Another one on the other side. I never saw this one at first, I thought. I can't get that unless I'm swimming across. <laughs> and then I saw this wee van and I just got it without falling in. Oh well, well done. Mission accomplished. So I got the end of my day yesterday and I really enjoyed the fishing but obviously it was very frustrating because as usual I didn't manage to encounter any fish. So I had a quick chat with Carla as you do and we decided between us that uh, we would like to keep the adventure alive and we're going to keep on going. So last night we jumped on the road and we drove across from Carlisle and we've booked ourselves a day on the South Tyne today. Then I checked the catch reports for the River Border-esque because I was convinced that I was on the right day yesterday. Well I caught in the fish pile anyway there was only one catch reported. The catch was a 30 pound salmon. <laughs> That's right Carl, you get ready for the day, you're going to need a lot of energy today. You may need to have two breakfasts.
Oh. So I've just been sitting here for two minutes while I tackle up. I've gone for two flies. I've got this size 12 double on the point and then a size 14 double on the on the dropper. I've got a dropper on because this river is going to be stuffed with sea trout after all the water we've had. When I first walked past the pool, I saw a good sized sea trout show. And then whilst I was sitting tying on the fly, there's a lovely salmon. Now, by lovely, you are talking between 15 and 20 pound. And it just came up and lazily rolled in this in this pool over here behind Carla. I hope that one comes my way. You might as well come out and play fishies because this is a catch and release fishery. So you're going to be going back. We'll just have a little dance together and then you'll be on your merry way. Both of us wise after the experience. I'm really looking forward to hearing my real scream. So I've had a few fish on this reel now, but they've all been smallish. So nothing's made like a tremendous run.
So that back is cute. There's a fishing hook with a map in it. I can't find the fishing hook. I'm sure I'll discover it at some point. But now I'll just keep following the river. I know that the uh, the fishing extends 200 meters down below the bridge and a mile above it. I wonder if I could wade across. I found the fish notes on the other bank. I'd like to have a look at the beat map. Oh, I think it's not going to be weird, was it? Uh, this looks like a lovely pool and it's rather a stunning scene as well look at that very nice the water such a lovely color Very, very yellow trout. Not the target. Not the target. Come here. You're beautiful, but you're not the target.
as you can see, I'm into a fish. I can feel my line twanging against them as it's diving into the rocks. Sweet. A sea trout. Hmm. Okay. He's still obviously very much full of life. friend. Off we go buddy. Lovely. This is one of Scotty's so well done Scotty that's the first time I've caught on one of your flies. to have beaten the blank for once. And if I had a problem with blanking then I would never go fishing because I certainly do more blanking than I do catching. Fancy this little spot here though around this, this tree. Any bigger salmon around? I can't believe I was within a mile of a 30 pounder yesterday. I was thinking about it last night, I was thinking about the chain of events that might have occurred for that to lead to a different outcome, i.e. me catching that 30 pounder. The person that caught it yesterday, if they had just maybe, maybe not made one cast, if they had scratched their nose or something, or just been slightly off, that fish might have just kept on swimming. One can dream here. Yeah. Okay, look, so here's what's next. I think the fishing extends up above that bridge, but I'm running out of batteries on my last one. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fish this very long pool here that extends about, oh, it's at least 300 yards, maybe it's 400 yards. So there's a lot of fishing to be done in this part, and then I think we'll stop for lunch and then tackle above the bridge later on. had some sort of pull. It was definitely heavier than a trout pull. Do the same cast again. 
Come on, let's go, fishies. There's an egret over there just crossing the river. And another oyster catcher, very unhappy again. Oh, it's coming in for a pass. Some sand martens. Not a lot of swallows, I haven't seen a lot of swallows this year at all. <coughs> of course. Hello. You look in nice condition. You're all shiny. As you were, I don't mean you any harm. So in weather news, it's raining hard. Come on, Rob. Now here's another weather update. Now it's raining really hard. Like, it feels like somebody's pouring buckets of water on me. There is some blue behind the clouds, so I hope it's not going to last very long. And at least I hope, I hope it turns the fish on. God, it's getting heavier. Oh my God. even worse. Somehow it's getting down my waders. Stop.
Oh, my back's wet. Oh no. Jesus Christ, it's getting worse again. Oh, how wet am I? I'm having to survive like savages, but you know what it is, I'm absolutely starving. I've revived myself with some hot food. So I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to abandon the south tide now because the water's dropped off. It's down to a foot above normal summer level, which is too low, really it needs to be 18 inches. So anyway, I think I've had the best of it. It's been hard, it's been quite a struggle, there hasn't been that many fish around. Thought it might fish a bit better today than it has, maybe yesterday would have been better. Anyway, not to worry, I've had a fish. It feels like I'd be flogging a dead horse if I kept on fishing here, so I think I'm just going to make my way home. I think I am going to keep on rolling though, I'm going to go and try the North Tyne on my way home. So there has been obviously a massive amount of water around recently, well relatively to what we've had. And I feel like I want to take advantage of it. I noticed last time when the main tine had a big lift that there was a place in the north tine that fished really well. So I might just call in there on my way home and, and have a couple of hours and, and see if I can pick up another fish. Yeah, I'm in. I'm in. I think it's a sea trout. Going for the reed beds. It's a bit close to me here for my liking because obviously the end of the lead eye is in the top rod eye. Go on, get away from me a bit and then play yourself out. It's 
It's not a big fish, but I just want to play it out before I attempt to net it. I think we might have the upper hand now. Okay, I've got it under control. Uh, yes, get in. Get in. I'm up and running again. You're very welcome. All right, let's just have a look at you. Let's see how fresh you are. You're well, well ready to go. There we are. Nice, the hex is well and truly off now and I'm up and running for the season. into another fish. Unfortunately the GoPro's let me down again. This GoPro is giving me a lot of grief these days. It's not a big fish, I think it's maybe a sea trout. Whatever, it's bloody exciting. Yeah, I'll try. I cannot really go into the bank to get out of the fast water because there's trees right above me. Too fast here, yeah. we'll just take it slowly and keep away from the trees. Come on, get your head the right way as I need it. Come on, that's a better one. Oh, lovely fish. Lovely fish. Oh, this is good. It's a shame I didn't get the tape there on the camera because it was really aggressive. Right, we'll not mess around with you. Oh, you're a beauty, you. Really nice fish. Ho oh, ho, how lucky am I? Two, two fish, one evening. Come on, we'll get you upside down. That's not too bad. Right, that's the hook out. Nice dinner.
that's my own stupid fault. I'll let it get into the fast water. Hear me little Chucky, no up smoke me bucky, have the bit of cracky till the boat comes in. Dance to the daddy sing, to the mummy dance, to the daddy, to the mummy sing. Thou shalt have the fishy on a little dishy, thou shalt have the fishy when the boat comes in.